Hi, and welcome back. Let's talk about aging and inequality. Mashona's chapter five. Act your age. I say this regularly to my two boys when I want them to shape up, stop throwing fits like they're three years old, unless they happen to be doing something that is completely typical for their age, in which case I tell them, grow up. But in point of fact, they there are are fairly typical, predictable behaviors that come with just about every age or series of years in a person's life. We separate these into age grades, and the collection of age grades is the life cycle. Sociologists and many psychologists use the concept of the life cycle to understand societal expectations for people at different age grades. For example, we expect that children will enter formal education, public, private, or at home, around age six. They will go through puberty around ages 11 through 17 with variations by sex. That most people will begin a career track, either with college or work or the military or public service, around age 18. That most people will get married or be in a long-term relationship sometime between ages 22 and 35. That most couples will have at least one child between the ages of about 24 and 38. That most working folks will retire between the ages of about 62 and 70, and that most retired folks will require more and more health care the older they get. Got all that? Okay, the life cycle theory is cool because it could be applied to other areas of sociology. For example, at what age grades are males and females most likely to engage in deviant behavior or crime? At what age grades are adults most likely to experience clinical depression? Okay, Let's talk about health and the elderly. Uh, one topic we'll cover more later in the course is the issue of health and health care. One immutable fact about health care is that, at least in industrial societies, it has advanced such that it has increased the life expectancy of the average male and female dramatically over the last hundred years. The world average life expectancy today is about 70 years. About 100 years ago, it was between 30 and 40 years. Again, worldwide average. Okay. In 2007, in the U.S., the life expectancy was 77.7 years, with males tending to die a little earlier than this and females a little later. In 1900, the life expectancy was 47.3 years. And there are wide variations by race and ethnicity on this, too, which you can read about in the book. Now, remember the baby boom, too. At the end of World War II, 1945, well over a million soldiers returned home and started celebrating being alive by having sex with their wives. Plus, there was more money for education, job growth, etc., so it seemed the right time to start a family. This led to a boom in the number of births, which we have now defined as anyone born between 1946 and 1964. These folks now range in age between about 50 and 70. They're starting to get older, and soon most will be retired. What's more, many will require greater health care because of the health problems associated with age. Another phenomenon you should be aware of is a generation referred to as the baby boom echo, which is my generation and probably includes some of you too. The baby boom echo is made up of the children of the baby boomers. You've got a lot more parents out there, the baby boomers, and they have, ch have had children themselves. The baby boom echo children are just starting to reach the prime of our careers, but that also means that there's a lot more competition for scarce good jobs. So unemployment or underemployment being a bit higher in my generation is not unexpected. Okay, what has happened to the extended family? This is an interesting phenomenon that has changed both over time in the U.S. and has shown major cross-cultural differences. The extended family is one in which more than two generations live together under one roof. So parents and children living together are two generations. If you add grandma and grandpa, or if the children grow up, have their own children, but remain living under the same roof, then you have an extended family. In the U.S., job mobility and transportation have eroded the extended family. Historically, it wasn't easy to move away from the place where you grew up. Tremendous social class reproduction meant that children tended to take on the same kinds of jobs as their parents and live in the same areas. With increases in education and increases in eligibility for jobs that were elsewhere, children began moving away from their childhood homes, i.e. away from their parents. There's a bifold problem here. On the one hand, 
Young parents with new babies are having a harder time finding care within the family. On the other hand, older parents facing the problems of aging don't have their grown-up children around to help with health issues and bills and estate planning, wills, etc. But this is a problem that is more prevalent in the U.S. than it is in other countries, even in, in other industrialized societies from Asia to Scandinavia, children tend to live near or with their parents for longer periods of time. What kinds of consequences do you think this could have for problems of health, finances, transportation, etc.? Give that some thought. So just something to consider as you ponder this chapter. It's a great chapter with a lot of facts that might surprise you. So make sure you give chapter 5 a good read through. Okay, that's enough for me, and I'll see you online.